So when your variable is removed from scope, Rust is actually inserting some code to drop your variable or clean up its resources. You can also implement this drop method yourself if you want to clean up some sort of resource that your instance takes up. So you might do something like this for like files, for sockets, for locks. But what if you want to do it yourself? That's what we're going to learn about today. My name is Ricky and welcome to the dev method. So some other languages have this notion of reference counting where um, every usage of the instance maybe being passed around or being used is counted. And then there's also this concept of garbage collection where there's something actually running uh, what you might think of like as in the background alongside your application. And then that is determining, oh, you're not using this anymore. I'll free up its resource. So every time you open a file, you're going to want to close the file. And then when you lock something, you're going to want to unlock something, then maybe lock it again, and etc. Or like you uh, bind to a socket, you'd need to then close that socket. And if you've been following along in the last couple of videos, we have this concept of a box, which takes a value and then stores it on the heap for us. So drop would then deallocate whatever's been stored on the heap for us. So Rust takes a lot of this in account for us and does the cleanup code as we need for all these smart pointers. So what if we want to intercept something? We want to run some sort of code on cleanup. So there's the drop trait, and it's actually included in the Rust prelude. And just as a review, the Rust prelude is just a certain amount of Rust code and function references that you can make, or trait references you can make, that don't require the use statement. So for our purposes, we're going to be doing this cleanup code, but we're just going to be printing something out, just as an example. So you get an idea of how this all works. So let's take a look at the example on line 16 and line 19. We have two different variable instances that we're making from this thing called custom smart pointer. And then uh, we're making a print statement. So these two things are going to make print statements about like my stuff and other stuff. So if we were to run this code, what do you think the order could be? Could it be that? Uh, we're going to get a print statement for my stuff and then a print statement for other stuff and then the print statement for line 22? Or would it be line 22 and then we get the print statement for C, which would be my stuff, and then the print statement for D, which would be other stuff? So let's actually run it and take a look. Maybe to help you inform your decision, let's take a look at how we've implemented this drop method. So I'm going to scroll up here a little bit higher and just show you our custom struct, our custom smart pointer. It has this thing called data. It's just going to be a string right now. Um, and then here we got our drop. So uh, we have a print statement in here, and that's all we're doing. So we have dropping custom smart pointer with data, and then it's going to be inside these backticks. And we're just giving it whatever the data is. That's how we give it this label in the print statement. So that's all we're doing. So this is just our example. So now with knowing that, let's actually run this example and see what the order of the print statements are. All right, let's just do a cargo build, make sure the build is OK, everything's good to go. Oh, we have some unused variables. That's OK. It's just an example. So let's do cargo run, and let's see what happens. All right, so we have uh, custom smart point pointers created. That's the first part. Then we have uh, the other stuff, which is actually the second variable. And then we have my stuff. So it's actually in reverse order as the instances are created. So that's just the default. Now, what if we want to customize when the cleanup code is actually happening? So that's where we actually use this standard library uh, drop function. So what if we want to drop the value early? That's where we can use something from the standard library, which is its own drop function. So now taking a look back at our previous example, uh, what if we wanted to call c.drop? like so, because we do implement it, right? Well, let's run this and let's see uh, what the compiler has to say. Okay, so it's telling us um, we're actually using the explicit use of a deconstructor method. So deconstructor is just a general programming term for like a teardown or some something about um, deallocating memory or cleanup code. So here in Rust, uh, it's noticing that we're calling drop directly. And uh, it's saying, for help, 
consider using this global drop instead. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's just use the global drop and see here and run that. Cargo run. Nice. So this drop function actually comes from the standard library. Uh, mem is the module and then it's just drop like so. So if I run this, uh, we'll have the same output here. So cargo run. There we go. Nice. Used. Perfect. Now let me just add one more example here. Um, so let's say we wanted D to drop early. I'm just going to create a new scope here. And now let's run our application. We should see that uh, D drops, so other stuff. Then we see the explicit uh, my stuff drop or whatever's in C. And then finally, the last print statement. Cargo run. Nice. All right, so yep, there's other stuff, then there's the my stuff, and then there's the one created. So now you have an idea of what's happening behind the scenes with this drop code. We've referenced it a little bit in some of the beginning videos of the Rust programming language. So if you haven't seen those, just check out the playlist in the channel and it's just called Rust. And you'll see one of the very first videos we talk about this concept of scope and values being dropped. So if you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, otherwise, if you guys want to stay updated on whatever the latest video is that I have posted, just go ahead and hit subscribe below. That way you can stay up to date. Other than that, um, I'll see you again later.